Hi, welcome to Free. I'm Geraldine, and this is the first video of the motivational section. Motivation is very, very important for learning English, for learning anything, for doing anything. So I consider that you should check the section if you have problems with English, if you don't like it, uh, if it's things you uh, if it's the thing you have to do. So the idea is to transform those things that you have to do into those things that you like doing, that you enjoy doing. So that power is in you. But I'll try to help you find it <laughs> because you have the power of loving English and loving chemistry or loving science or loving grammar or anything you have you have problems with or anything you struggle with, okay? Uh, so first thought, don't say, I don't like it. So you have to stop saying it. You have to st stop having those negative thoughts because they are not going to help you. If you, you have a goal that goes, be goes beyond English, maybe English is not your primary goal because for many of you it is, not. <laughs> For many of you, what you want to do is to study economy or to study an MBA and to learn things, to know how to do your job better. So you don't see English as part of that, but you know that English is important. So you have to stop seeing English like that thing that, 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 that doesn't let you be better. Look English as that step that is going to help you be better. Have in mind your purpose, your main objective. Okay, so you can try doing that. <laughs> um, English is good. Uh, so uh, one important thing for learning it is to try to have fun. Um, there's one thing that many of us have done is studying English. Um, never finishing it or especially at the beginning uh, thinking it, it's too difficult or finding it's very difficult and not seeing any progress and uh, English is uh, a language and whatever your native language is you have to have in mind how you learned that language because if you speak Spanish like me or your native language is, I don't know, Italian or Portuguese or, uh, I don't know, whatever your language is, please comment and tell me what your native language is. Think of how long it took you to learn that language, to learn it appropriately. Because a child starts speaking when they are... Two months? I don't know, you tell me. A year? So think think of that. A baby that's been in contact with a language for one year, one year of people talking to that baby. After a year, that baby is able to say one or two words. Because the first step is to listen. And that it's not listen and repeat as you probably have experienced. The teacher says something and you feel that there's no way you are saying the same thing that the teacher said. Because it's the first time you heard it. After the 10,000th time you heard it, maybe you'll start saying it correctly. So first step, you don't even need to talk. You need to listen. If you want to write, you don't even need to write. You need to read. Yes, you need to be in contact with that language. So a good thing is to choose the things that you like and check those things in English. For example, if you like TV and uh, maybe a lot of people tell you that they have learned English watching TV, that they don't, the, don't use subtitles or whatever, and maybe you think that is too much for you. 
But think again, that is not too much for you. You can do it, and you can do it even better. Choose your favorite program, for example. Choose the program that you already have seen a million times, or a movie that you already know that you uh, could tell the dialogues yourself, and then watch it in English. But you already know what it is about. So at that point, you're enjoying what's going on, and you're starting learning English. After watching the movie one time, you won't learn English, but you'll feel more comfortable with it because it's something you enjoy. And I bet that there are many things that you know in English that you didn't even know you know, that you, you're not aware of because the world talks in English. There are many words and things that you say that have not no translation into your language. So everybody in the world says okay. And okay is just spelling the O and the K. And you do it all the time. And for example, here in my country, we say sorry, sorry all the time, uh, like in our accent, right? So you know what? Sorry means sorry, that you, that you apologize for something or whatever. Uh, so try to find that and find the value in it. The key here is to be positive. You need to be positive. If you are into cars, then start looking at a magazine in English about cars and relate the things in English to the things that you already know. And that way you will start feeling more familiar with. Now, don't let anybody fool you and tell you that in six months you're going to be speaking like a native speaker and understanding everything you hear because that is not the case unless you are a genius or you are really obsessed with this. Like, I haven't seen the case, but maybe it is possible. But no, if you are like a sort of normal person and you think this is very important to you, then definitely uh, you won't learn by studying 30 minutes every day because from the 30 minutes, 23 hours and 30 minutes, you're going to be doing something else that is not English. So obviously you cannot be studying 24 hours or you cannot be studying the 16 hours that you are awake. But in the things that you normally do, you try to incorporate English. For example, one thing I do with my students and some I don't know the value they find in it, but uh, it's very valuable, is to change the settings of your phone to English. The phone is a device that you know, like the palm of your hand. Your cell phone or your smartphone is something you know, like the palm of your hand. So if you change it to English, would it be very different? Because you already know the pictures of the apps, or where to press and then yeah it will be a challenge at first but uh, then you will learn you will get used to it you will but then you will learn you will get used to it or like your email or your TV settings then if you have a problem and there's something you don't understand you can always switch to 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 your native language but if you want to learn Try to incorporate that into your life. Or if you like clothes, I don't know, start looking at those clothes in, uh, in, uh, in English speaking websites. Or um, if, you're, if you're into, or just if you like reading labels and you will always see that there are lots of languages and you immediately go to your native language, mm. but there's probably <laughs> English there too. So read it and compare it if you want. Translation is a great thing. Uh, it's a bad thing if you translate if you translate word by word, but if you translate the whole idea, it's a very powerful tool for you. So um, tell me if you're going to take this advice, if you find it useful, and uh, how it goes. Uh, but please, check the next videos. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, and see you soon.